Hello, this is Miss Andrea, and in today's video, I want to discuss how to take advantage of videos and documentaries. This is part of my series on homeschool hacks that anyone can use. So I have my notes. I will be looking off the screen a little because I don't want to forget anything. So let's start with math, okay? Of course, Khan Academy is kind of the go-to for math that a lot of homeschoolers use. And while I recommend that all my students start there and try it, it's just not for everyone. Um, but I definitely recommend you start there. There are, it's a whole library of just about any math from preschool through early college. Um, and it's set up in a way that you can test yourself through it, fill any holes you have, and etc. But if you find that Khan Academy is not for you, is not for your student, there are other um, math video type um, things that you can use. It's math antics. Teaches math kind of like we remember it, you know, us the parents. Um, I checked out the long division video and a few of the other videos and while the new math works for a lot of people I've had long discussions with people who struggled in math and now they teach math using new math and that makes sense in their heads there's some of us who the new math just doesn't work for and if you want um, math that you can help your children through that makes sense in your head you want to try math antics There is also um, a series called Math with Mr. J. Um, it goes from, I think, kindergarten through fifth grade. And I like the animated way that um, Math with Mr. J teaches math also. I would probably toggle back and forth between um, these other two video series, Math Antics and Math with Mr. J while using Khan Academy because Khan Academy is great, but sometimes the videos don't explain it in a way that you get it the first time. So if you find that your child doesn't get it through Khan Academy, then go to Math Antics or go to Math with Mr. J and look at those videos together with your kids. And then I think that they will get the math concepts. Next is language arts, and you think that you couldn't learn language arts with videos, but you absolutely can. Um, one YouTube channel I like um, for language arts videos is called Minute Book Reports. Um, the person who makes Minute Book Reports isn't super active. He seems to put them up in spurts, the last spurt being about three years ago. But there's a large library of minute book reports there for you. Um, he's not the only one that's there, but it's definitely one that I like. Um, and then there is ah, um, the LibriVox channel, which is called Greatest Audio Books. Huge library. Of novels now my point for you to use this is not to let the children get out of reading um, when children are reading large tomes that are difficult to get through I recommend that you turn on the LibriVox version of the book while they have the book in their hand and they read it together with the LibriVox that helps them learn to track it helps them keep up the pace. Um, it helps auditory readers not just read it, but hear it. So I highly recommend using Greatest Audiobook, which is actually LibriVox recordings, and there's a huge, huge library of those. And then for English grammar mechanics, outside of you know the Khan Academy, I love Crash Course. Crash Course has many courses, but the English literature course walks you through things like, why do we read? You know, how do these parts of grammar work? 
and then it takes you through also analyzing some literature. So Crash Course English Literature is definitely a really good um, video series. Speaking of Crash Course, let's move over to Science. I used Crash Course Science this summer with my Science Bowl students to help get some of those extra math concepts into their heads really quick. Um, they just teach in a way that's memorable and they're a little funny. There's a little, they're a little irreverent. They're a little adult. So high school students and above, they just make a lot of um, jokes that border on the edge of off color. Um, and those are the ones with Mr. Green, um, the ones with the women in it and the ones that have the PBS logo on it are fine. So Crash Course for Science. Also, um, Science Max explains concepts. And also Science Max, um, like something like Science Max Big Experiments, or it does experiments big. Um, it's literally a channel of science experiments where he goes over the top with them, does them on the biggest scale possible. So if your homeschooler is suffering from seeing science in 3D, Science Max is perfect. If your public school student needs to see the concept better, Science Max is perfect. Um, finally, for science, I like to use documentaries to reinforce science. Um, just, just something to pique their interest, to, to draw them in. Um, literally, you can just type in whatever science subject and the word documentary into YouTube and you're going to find many science um, documentaries to choose from. But if you want a specific channel that I recommend, it's going to be National Geographic. Um, they just have all your science topics, videos from four minutes long to like an hour and change that are going to draw the student in, teach them more background, just kind of bring the topic to life, especially if it's a topic that just seems like it's just wearing the kid down and they just really don't care. Um, find a documentary that pulls them deeper into the topic that'll kind of pique their interest. And this is really good for public school students to do on the weekends. Me and my dad watch so many science and history documentaries um, on the weekends growing up and it really did make everything more relevant. And speaking of social studies and documentaries, yes, National Geographic is also great for social studies documentaries. Same deal. Um, you can use YouTube and just type in any social studies topic in the word documentary and you're going to get long intriguing videos. Um, but once again, if you want someone I recommend, um, it will be National Geographic. Disclaimer, National Geographic has also has some videos that aren't 100% scientific and aren't 100% historical. They're kind of more, um, they kind of fall into the realm of mystery. And so I don't trust those to teach. I mean, they're definitely a curiosity, but if you watch those, then you're gonna want with your kids to then follow the kind of rabbit trails to verify what they've said scientifically. For example, they go on and on about the mystery of Stonehenge and what is Stonehenge and no one will ever know. We know exactly what Stonehenge is. Stonehenge is a giant um, clock that signifies the equinoxes of the year. So, you know, watch out for the more sensational stuff from National Geographic still. I really like it for the documentaries. If you want some shorter, more straight to the punch clips for social studies, um, look at Geo History. Geo History does a really good job of keeping social studies topics more bite-sized 
and it's animated and animation kind of helps you remember things so that's really cool and finally for social studies i like ted ed ted ed isn't just for social studies um they just have a really nice library of social studies videos um and it's not all by one person it's just a collection of um things that other people have made that you know under ted ed um and if you like documentaries if you like talkbacks if you like just really informational things i love ted ed for that